The connection and symbiosis between plants and humans extends to the very roots of our existence. Human ancestors coexisted with many plants with multitudinous properties that affected the physiology of these ancient hominids. Some of the naturally occurring chemicals were psychoactive and produced hallucinations. There is evidence that early humans may have used these plant hallucinogens during religious rituals in archaic civilizations of the Paleolithic era as recently as 19,000 years ago. Over the convening thousands of years, varied cultures around the world began to employ these plants in a practice known as shamanism. During times of tribal or civil crisis, a spiritual adept known as a shaman would partake in a quest of sorts to find a solution. His catalyst was the plant hallucinogen. Versions of these rituals and substances were also employed by large cultures such as the Minoans, Babylonians, Mayans, and Greeks. Remnants of these practices still remain. Christian rituals such as the sacrament, Easter, and Christmas are one example. But while the largest religions on earth have turned to violence, <clears throat> corruption, and control, the shamanistic tribes remain as they were thousands of years ago, untouched by time. Plant hallucinogens have clearly been a catalyst in the development of shamanism, religion, and culture. As time passed, shamanistic tribes and peoples appeared around the planet. The shamans of northern Siberia would eat the distinctive red and white mushroom Amanita muscaria, or fly agaric. These were found beneath the pine trees and often consumed by the reindeer these tribes herded. This could be one of the origins of Christmas and the flying reindeer, or presence under the tree myths. According to a legend of the Siberian Jakuten, the souls of their shamans were born in a fur on the mountain Zokuo. This became the first Christmas tree of the sacred nights. Thousands of miles away in the Amazon rainforest, shamans came into being through a personal crisis, often life-threatening. The old master shaman would mix a decoction known as ayahuasca. During the acolyte's sub subsequent intoxication, spirit animals would guide him through the dream world. The shaman would then be reborn on his destined path, becoming guide and healer. Medicine Man also guided southwestern Amerindian tribes in dreamwalking by taking peyote. European witches used henbane and nightshade. Indian and ancient Chinese cultures took opium from the poppy and also discovered a substance known as soma, which is referenced in the Rig Veda. Even African societies used hallucinogenic mushrooms in rituals around 12,000 BCE. In Food of the Gods, mycologist and ethnobotanist Terence McKenna supports this theory. Archaeological evidence for these speculative ideas can be found in sub-Saharan Africa at Tassili. The paintings of dancing shamans clearly have mushrooms in their hands and sprouting from their bodies. The lands of the Tassili may very well have been the historical version of the biblical Garden of Eden and the mushroom, the fruit of the Tree of Knowledge. While these distant cultures consumed quite diverse plant hallucinogens and performed varied rituals, shamans played an integral role in all of them. In 2010, archaeologists excavated the El Maron cave site in northern Spain, finding the fossilized remains of a woman from the Magdalenian era. Now known as the Red Lady of El Maron, after the pigment that stained her body, her burial site was elaborately painted in a red ochre pigment. Flowers, stone monuments, and other offerings indicate the ritual burial of a woman of high cultural stature. Her jawbone was intact, and some food matter was found in the teeth. After dental calculus was applied, lead researcher Robert Power determined that the Red Lady consumed a variety of plants from different environments, as well as other foods, including bolete mushrooms. These contain several hallucinogenic alkaloids, primarily psilocin and psilocybin. In stark contrast to this evolution, the New World Amerindians practiced methods of tribal shamanism that more closely resembled the Tassili of Africa for thousands of years. These rituals did not change until the arrival of European cultures. There were a few exceptions in the Yucatan Peninsula, particularly the Olmec, Teotihuacan, and Maya. Although all three may have employed entheogenic shamanism, the Mayans developed a much more complex culture and city-state pattern. There is also much greater indication via statuary evidence that the Mayans consumed psychoactive mushrooms during rituals. They developed quite advanced techniques of astronomy and calendar writing. This could have been inspired by the acute visual acuity imparted by tryptamine hallucinogens. Meanwhile, the mushroom Strafaria cabenzis and its ritual users migrated across the Mediterranean to the island of Crete, forming the Minoan society. Here, the origins of the Dionysian and Eleusian mystery schools arose, possibly using the mushrooms in rituals. Although these mystery schools can come in to fruition during the Hellenistic era, its connection to the original shamanism and entheogen consumption fade, or more likely became hidden and used only by the elite few. Suffice to say, these archaic rituals and consumptions of hallucinogens could very well have traveled from the Tassili shamans of Africa to the Minoans, onto the Greek, and eventually Roman mythologies. This is where it turns to Christianity. <clears throat>
the people of Minoan Crete had kept the old, old archaic religion that came out of Africa. And then in the last gasp of that Minoan culture, those mysteries were handed on to the mainland of Greece and became the mysteries at, uh, at Eleusis and, uh, and other cult sites. Even Christianity may have been influenced. The terms Soma and Manna were often used interchangeably. This could account for the Christian sacrament ritual of consuming the bread or body of Christ. As in the old shamanic times, the power of the substance is passed, at least metaphorically, into the body of the consumer or worshiper. An excerpt from John 6:31-41 through 41 reads, Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Manna was also described as a small round stone found on the ground. That description is more indicative of a mushroom than of bread. Christian and Egyptian theology was also highly influenced by a Babylonian religion, whose shaman-like priests probably used Soma. Many Babylonian artifacts depict a staff with a pine cone, the same symbol on the Catholic papal staff in the present day. Mushroom alkaloids stimulate the pineal gland, named for its pine cone shape, which then produces dimethyltryptamine, the most powerful hallucinogenic compound known to man. The Babylonian goddess Ishtar is also shown using pine cone shapes and rituals. She is the inspiration for the pagan and Christmas Easter rituals as well. Once again, it appears that some elements of the past show up in modern religions.